only see people abandon anarchy in activist circles. I don't see people who are serious thinkers about it ever drop it. I mean, I know people who have been writing about and thinking about these ideas for 60 and 70 years, you know, and that's not just like rare people. I mean, there's people who are doing that. So, but what I think is that the manifestations of anarchism and anarchy in the United States have mostly been anarchism, right? It was red and black. It was like, you know, worker black and red stuff where it's like you're coming out of like working class areas, you know, worker cooperatives, you know, building power, labor power and stuff. But I think that what happens is that the containers of activism, which no matter what spectrum you're on, kind of cloud everything, people leave that because there's not very much for it because activism is really about resisting power, but it's not about creating power. A lot of the manifestations of it are only creating power to resist larger power. So I think people leave because it gets frustrating because we're not building, we're doing a lot of resisting and not a lot of creating. Mm -hmm. And so that's my estimation of it. I think the other thing is disillusionment that happens with people because capitalism is very, actually it's all economic systems that we are in right now. I wouldn't even just say capitalism, we can say social Socialism with a big S, you know, dictatorial communism, whatever flavors we have going around the globe right now. They're very powerful cultural and structural institutions that are reinforced daily, and it's hard to live and think outside of those. It's hard to imagine and then want to make the sacrifice to live outside of those because they can draw us in so easy. They sing their siren song all the time to draw us back in. But I think also the manifestations of anarchy in the United States and many places in Europe have not very much relevance outside of specific ideological or activist subcultures, too. And that's the truth of it. And that's, the I think, the biggest problem with it. There's a thing that happens in activism that it took a long time for me to figure it out. I couldn't figure it out. Like, why do people leave all the time? Like, I've been doing this thing for 35 years. I haven't always been an anarchist, but I've been doing this for 35 or almost 40 years. But I've known tens of thousands of people that have come through and people who had been in for a long time, but they always leave. And so I started to ask myself, what is it? Well, there's a social development that happens. This happens with individually, but I'm going to put a political framing on it, which is that when we all are growing up as people, it's not just age, because you can do this at different times in your life, but at some point when you, you grow up, you reject the culture that you have come up in. Usually it's rejecting your parents, rejecting religion, rejecting maybe government to a degree, but you reject that first because this is how you build who you are and you begin to explore who you are. So the second phase, that's phase one, and the second phase is that you begin to ask the questions, who am I? And you try on all these hats. So you see people in their teenage years and they're in their 20s, generally, but people do it at all ages. But they're trying to figure out who it is. And they're like, in political terms, am I a communist? Am I an anarchist? Am I trans? Am I a black nationalist? You know, like there's different things. Again, I'm giving a political framing for this. I'm not talking about everybody's individuality. So that's the main thing that happens. And then what happens generally is that once you figure out your identity, you've gone to all the clubhouses and you've done all these things and you've figured out who you are, you begin to enter the mainstream world again with your new identity. And so you just now have become a new person, whoever that is. So what happens is that activism draws us in because it's anti-authoritarian at all levels. Everybody wants to fight the power, but then we don't retain anybody because we just have the first two phases coming in and out repeatedly. And so when we do that, the people who get into the third phase leave because there's nothing for them. There's nothing that's been built for the long term. There's nothing that's sustainable for, I'm gonna use the word adults, but that sounds more derogatory, but people who have tried to figure out their way in the world. It's hard to be a, let's pretend you're a doctor or, or something, and it have to be that elegant, but pretend you're a doctor. Well, if you're a doctor in activist world, there's only a couple of ways that you can engage with it. And what I realized is that people that stayed in, like myself, for a long time, had to create positions for themselves, not a power, but had to always create worlds outside of that. And so there was not a lot of growth and people just kept leaving. So I was just finally tired of having to do 101 things again and again for the 500th time or the 6,000th time. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they're not valuable. I just didn't want to be a part of them anymore. Yeah. It just, there was no value in it for me anymore. Not even as an elder, it was getting to be, there was not enough in it. So I left. So, and I got tired of resisting. I want to build stuff. For sure. I want to challenge people to build and create. Not that we don't resist, but in a liberatory way. Right. So that's kind of where, it, where I ended up. Yeah.